Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over some advice when it comes to being a better raider. A lot of this stuff is, well, stuff that I'll be following myself since I haven't really raided since early HFC. It's a team game so this video is really all about being a better team player, both in terms of working together but also what we, as individual players, can bring to the teams that we're a part of. The big name of the game today is Humility, so we're going to look at our performance, we're going to look at what areas we're lacking in, and then we're going to work on improving ourselves. Now, I'm not a Mythic Raider, and this video is not aimed at people doing Mythic Raids. It's aimed at the general WoW-playing audience. That's a group that I f firmly fall into. Uh, so between working at my game dev stuff and running the channel, the most I can manage is two to three raid nights a week and a few hours here and there on the weekends. So that translates to heroic and normal progression raiders who aren't going for server firsts, but still want to make use of the limited raiding time that we end up having. So the format of this video is just going through the advice point by point. I'm going to try to keep it nice, brief, and quick. Unfortunately, our first night ended up being a little bit messy, so most of the footage in this video is going to be coming from the Mythic Plus runs that I've been doing, and we actually got up to Mythic Plus 6, which is going to give me some 870 gear, which is a very good upgrade even for heroic raids. And let's just get right into it with key bindings. So, work out some good key bindings. My personal recommendation is having your rotational things on the keypad of an MMO mouse, that's what I personally do, and then having utility stuff around the WASD cluster. Totally comes down to personal preference and muscle memory though, so I think it's best to think through your own solution. I do recommend looking through the games that you normally play and thinking about the muscle memory that you will have actually developed playing those, and then try to make use of that in how you keybind stuff in World of Warcraft. Next point, making use of your utility. Doing great damage is fantastic, but making the lives of your teammates easier will make people enjoy playing the game with you a lot. What does this boil down to? Essentially, just not being lazy. During trash, just stun stuff, interrupt stuff. Don't just let someone else do it. You see, the raid leader is probably tracking who's doing all of that stuff, and believe me, they will know who's putting in the extra effort. So in general, try to make other people's lives a bit easier. As an example, if you're a hunter, interrupt a caster who's, you know, not running into the tank's cluster. The group damage will be higher, and you'll make the tank's life easier. Stuff like that really adds up, and it lends itself to a more positive rating environment. Next, take extra responsibility. So if you're looking to solidify your raid spot, I think you should really be thinking about how you can go the extra mile. Not only will you be more valued in the eyes of your raid leader, but you'll probably end up having a more fulfilling time raiding, and, you know, it feels good to help out. What this amounts to really depends based on the fight, but quite often there's additional tasks in a fight that need to be done. I just recommend being the person who volunteers for that task and going the extra mile. You'll learn a lot in doing so, and I think it'll make you a better player, and your team will really appreciate it. Next, custom fight weak ores. So this one's a bit more advanced. You might want to make some custom weak ores to aid you in the fight. Now, there's a big discussion going on about the role of add-ons in raiding and what that should be, but let's just put that aside for now. Weak ores can be great for notifying you of various different things in a fight, or for setting up custom trackers or other stuff like that. Legion is the first expansion that I actually plan to do this in, and I found an absolutely wonderful set of weak ores by an author called Real, which is what I'll be using as the basis for what I do, and there'll be a link to that down in the description. I'm pretty excited to take these things for a spin and see if it helps me improve my gameplay. Next, on the topic of weak ores, class-based weak ores. Action bars tell you a lot, but you stand to gain a lot from using a custom weak ore that is designed to your spec. You can also use tell me when, I prefer weak ores. You'll generally just have better resource tracking, sort of inbuilt optimal like priority suggestions, things like that. For many players, this will help you ensure that your rotation is executed as close to perfectly as it can be. And a great place to look for this, I think, is to go to the MMO Champion forums, go to your class forum. Generally, there'll be a few pretty popular posts containing good weak ores there. Next, learn how to optimize your character. This is something that many raiders will already be doing, but if you don't know, or if you've maybe been ignoring this, then you've definitely been losing out, I think. Working out what to do with gear was a bit harder in the past because we didn't have as many resources as we did to, as we do today, or those resources were a bit more clunky to use. Oddly enough, I think gear has gotten more complex as times went on. Sometimes it's a bit harder to work out what's the best for your character, so there's even more ways to fail in this regard. 
When it comes to character optimization, I recommend Ask Mr. Robot. I've been using their site for years. It's pretty much never let me down. Just head to the site, find your server, find your character, then hit optimize. It will give you suggestions based on, um, you know, how to jam your socket, stuff like that. And that's all um, depending on uh, DPS simulations that they run. Generally, I find it to be pretty surefire for what I use it for. There are other great features that are under a pretty cheap paywall. It's worth it to me, but that's really a personal question. For a time, my guild had a subscription, so pretty much all of our players just had access to the premium features. So, like, for me, the convenience of, say, Best in Bags and the Upgrade Finder was worth it, but they're definitely not needed. And on a similar topic, learn how to optimize your gameplay. So I think this is maybe the most important part of the video. It's all about adopting an iterative mindset to your own improvement. So try to improve just a little bit every night, and after a few weeks, you'll find yourself performing fantastically. So how do we do this? Well, first, it's a good idea to log your fights using Warcraft logs. I'll have a link to some useful resources down in the description. Go through the combat log and work out where you messed up on a fight. So before focusing on DPS, I think you should focus on the mechanics that keep on killing you or cause you to take too much damage in a fight. So really, look at the amount of damage that your character actually received more than the damage that your character did initially because, well, you do no damage when you're dead and it's definitely worthwhile figuring out which mechanics are causing you the most issues in a fight. Once you get used to the UI, it's pretty fast to use Warcraft logs to work out where you need to improve. Benchmarking DPS is a little bit harder since Ask Mr. Robot discontinued their combat log and infographic feature, but you can use their simulator with your character to work out how much damage you, roughly speaking, should be doing. It's not a be-all, end-all, but it is a useful tool. So next, just learn the fights. Your first attempt at a boss shouldn't be blind. Uh, there are many great resources out there, and it's really a shame if somebody wastes their team's time by not coming prepared. For the long-form guys, you've got the likes of Fat Boss, you've got Method, LOS Gaming do excellent short-form videos on boss fights. And now one thing that I think you should do is boil a boss fight down just to what it means to you, at least do this initially. Of course, you need to be aware of other people's roles, but if you're struggling, then just think about it in terms of what you have to do not to mess it up for the team. Most fights can be boiled down to a few lines insofar as what they demand from any individual player, especially if you're a DPS or, you know, it's not the most integral role to the fight. Next, master your class and the fight together. So often you'll find there's an optimal way to play your class for a given fight. Tips and tricks, that kind of thing. Working this stuff out will really help you shine. For an example, if you're a hunter, you can cheese loads of mechanics using Aspect of the Turtle. You can probably do some nice stuff with Feign Death. You can work out how the cooldowns of your talents fit into the mechanics of the fight. So you can choose stuff that lines up really well. Generally, you just want to, well, first of all, just take up the best set of talents for the fight you're going into, but then think about tips and tricks, any, you know, nice tactics you can use to really shine on an individual encounter. Generally, again, going to the MMO Champion class forums, you will find for every single raid tier, there is generally a compilation thread of tips and tricks for each class and spec um, that pretty much relates to every fight, and you can find some really great information there. Next, I want to talk about hardware, so you shouldn't feel the need to or be required to purchase expensive peripherals, but there could be some benefit to it. Having an MMO mouse is beyond helpful to me. Now, my personal setup is a Vortex Poker 3, which is a brilliant 60% format keyboard paired with a Razer Naga. It works brilliantly for me. I know getting used to a 60% keyboard is very uh, sort of strange for some. For me, it's definitely something I love, though. It's kind of designed for programming and uh, writing, which is a lot of what I do, but I really do like it for gaming. Now, as far as voice comms go, you probably want to look into having a decent mic and a headset. Don't be, you know, don't use speakers and have feedback going into your voice. It'll drive everyone mad. But yeah, something like, say, a HyperX Cloud 2 is a pretty good bet just off the top of my head. Anyway, let's talk about VoIP. VoIP helps a lot. My guild uses Discord, though I've got to disclose they have sponsored content on the channel. On that topic, I do have a server set up for the channel's community, which has been doing great, so you can check that out. But of course, there are other alternatives. Before using Discord, we were using Mumble, and I know the TeamSpeak still has a really big following out there. Just don't use Skype. Skype's the worst. Um, but anyway, not everyone has to talk on VoIP, but I think it should be a raid requirement that everyone is on the VoIP server and can listen. You just can't get through the higher stuff without it, honestly, and it will save so much time if people can just explain stuff over voice rather than having to type it out. And next on the VoIP topic, I'm going to recommend keeping quiet during fights. This kind of 
evolves out of how our raid team dealt with some stuff. Basically, just keeping all non-fight chatter to an absolute minimum during a progression fight really helped us. What happens is that even if you're able to concentrate and talk, it will distract other people. That's going to lead to just a net of more mistakes across the board, often to the point where there's unneeded uh, wipes. Now, of course, go ham, have fun outside of the fights. Um, but I really do think that during a progression fight, the only chatter should be from the people who are supposed to be calling things out or from anyone who's just got something super relevant to the specific situation to say. If you want to critique the strategy, wait till you've all died. Um, at least you'll be able to back it up with the fact that you've all died. I'm not saying don't have fun. Absolutely have fun. There's no point in playing the game if you're not having fun. But I think it just, you need to work it out in a fight so that it's not contributing to any wipes. Because pointless wipes where nothing are learned, they just demoralize the team. And overall, you end up losing members and just nobody has that passion for raiding. It gets lost. That really hurt us when it came to Blackrock Foundry and Hellfire Citadel. So I think that's a really important lesson to learn. Anyway, moving on, I recommend you try playing other classes. Maybe a bit tricky with how artifacts play out, but... Once you've got your personal gameplay worked out, I think it's super beneficial to play other classes, especially other roles. You'll gain insights into the perspectives of your teammates and how they see a fight, and that will really help to increase your overall awareness and your understanding of the situation. So yeah, give healing a go. You'll kind of get in the mind of your healer. The same goes for the tanks as well. Next, benchmark your performance and iterate. So this is really the final point of the video here. And often things seem really overwhelming when we look at the entire thing that we want to do. So, you know, I, I wake up on Monday morning, I look at the work week, I realize, okay, I've got to make, you know, three presentations, I've got to code a new system, coordinate something with an artist. No, then I've got to go do a bunch of videos and I end up sitting there for half a day. I've done absolutely nothing uh, because I've gone about the entire thing arse backwards and I've been thinking about seven days of work when what I should actually be thinking about is what am I going to do for the next two hours and split it down into the small chunks. So how I think this stuff applies to the raiding is what you should do is take an iterative approach. So each raid, benchmark how well you've done, then work out just one or two things you want to improve for the next raid night, then practice those things. Now, you can practice stuff in LFR and kind of headcanon it in your head that, uh, you know, it's a real big raid. Uh, you can do a Mythic Plus dungeon if you want to work in something or just, you know, use a target dummy if there's like one bit of your rotation that you've keep on messing up and it really annoys you and you want to just develop that muscle memory um, very much the hard way, uh, you know, just do those things and try to make a small measurable improvement for the next raid night. Using things like Ask Mr. Robot can really help you find out if you performed better or worse than last time and it doesn't take that much effort to get stuff right as long as you're honest with yourself, own your own failures and make small improvements uh, with each raid. I think nobody worth playing with expects somebody to instantly become one of the best players on the server. Indeed, what I think people generally respect a lot and what I respect a lot is when somebody has said, you know what, I'm actually, I'm messing this thing up. I need it. I need to be better. And then they go and they get better at that thing. That just, you know, it shows humility. It shows work. So many great things that people will really, I think, like you for. And the same, of course, goes for me when I need to improve things. And that's really it for the video. Going into Legion, I think my largest personal focus is being a bit less distractible and, uh, well, more focused when it comes to fights. Often I just find myself after, like, the fourth pool just kind of drifting off a bit and maybe I'm thinking about a YouTube video I want to record after the raid or something like that. And what it results in is really dumb mistakes that lead to me taking unnecessary damage, which puts a strain on the healers. And then, you know, the, the worst case scenario there is it leads to me dying, which could be up to, what, a fifth of the raid's damage if it's a 10-player raid, just disappearing, which probably means it's not going, you know, people aren't going to hit, um, you know, th just the damage won't be enough to get the fight done before a certain break point. But, you know, the raid leader will probably say, look, I know we've lost the player, but we shouldn't wipe so we can get more attempts in on the mechanics. So then it just ends up in a lot of time being wasted because one person, you know, perhaps me, has died in a really dumb way. So one of my big focuses is doing that a lot less. I suppose I'll let you know how that goes as time goes on, but I'm definitely very excited for raiding in Legion. I really enjoyed Highmall and the initial stuff in Blackrock Foundry, but we just had some kind of issues with our comp and things like that. Um, and then just as well with Warlords of Draenor not really inspiring people to keep on playing the game. We then had attendance problems, um, which, you know, they're all totally, like, understandable, reasonable things. And, you know, I found it hard to attend 
uh, the raid sometimes because I was pretty unhyped about Warlords. But now with Legion doing so well, you know, it's like a fresh slate. Everyone in the guild is excited and enthused for raiding. So I'm absolutely looking forward to getting some raiding in in Legion and hopefully improving myself as a player so that I can, well, first of all, be better because it's, it's fun, you know, for me to be like that but um, also that I can make better YouTube content for everyone who watches the channel. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any of your own tips, then leave them down in the comments or hit me up on Twitter and I'll, you know, sort of retweet the really good stuff. But anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>